I'm what you would call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. Pokemon Diamond and Jade, Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency which we can find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and such. They're generally fun, even if they're unplayable, which they often are. The mistranslations and poor quality make them unintentionally hilarious. I've been able to find most of the ones that I played online, but there's one that I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about five years ago. On screen is a picture of the cartridge, in case anyone recognizes it. The game started with the familiar Nidorino and Gengar intro of Red and Blue. However, the press start screen had been altered. Red was there, but the Pokemon didn't cycle through. It also said Black version of the Pokemon logo. Upon selecting New Game, the game started the Professor Oak speech, and it quickly became evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version. After selecting your starter, if you looked at your Pokemon, in addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle, you had another Pokemon. Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1. It had the sprite of the ghosts that are encountered in Lavender Town before obtaining the Silph Scope. It also had one attack. Curse. I know that there is a real move called Curse, but the attack didn't exist in Generation 1, so it appears it was hacked in. Defending Pokemon were unable to attack Ghost. It would only say that they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of the defending Pokemon would be heard, but it was distorted, played at a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear and the defending Pokemon would be gone. If used in battle against a trainer, when the Pokeballs representing their Pokemon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. The implication was that the Pokemon died. What's even stranger is that after defeating a trainer and seeing the red receive $200 for winning, the battle commands would appear again. If you selected Run, the battle would end as it normally does. You could also select Curse. If you did, upon returning to the overworld, the trainer's sprite would be gone. After leaving and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with a tombstone like the ones at Lavender Town. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against Ghost Pokemon. It would also fail if it was used against trainers that you would have to face again, such as your rival or Giovanni. It was usable, however, in your final battle against them. I figured this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use previously uncapturable ghosts, and because Curse made the game so easy, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the Elite Four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of ghosts and a couple of Pokemon I used for HMs, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words, Many years later. And then it cut to Lavender Town. An old man was standing, looking at tombstones. You then realize that this man is your character. The man moved at only half of your normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokemon with you, not even ghosts, who, up until this point, had been impossible to remove from your party just by depositing in the PC. The overworld was entirely empty. There were no people at all. There were still the tombstones of the trainers that you used Curse on, however. You could go pretty much anywhere in the overworld at this point, though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokemon to use HMs, and regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued on an infinite loop. After wandering for a while, I found that if you go through Diglett's cave, one of the cuttable bushes that normally blocks the path on the other side is no longer there, allowing you to advance and return to Pallet Town. Upon entering your house and going to the exact tile where you start the game, the screen would cut to black. Then a sprite of a Caterpie appeared. It was replaced by a Weedle, and then a Pidgey. I soon realized as the Pokemon progressed from Rattata to Blastoise that these were all of the Pokemon that I used Curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, then a bug catcher. These were the trainers I'd cursed. Throughout the sequence, the Lavender Town music was playing, but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. By the time your rival appeared on screen, it was more than a demonic rumble. Another cut to black. A few moments later, the battle screen suddenly appeared. Your trainer sprite was now that of an old man, the same one who teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghost appeared on the other side alongside the words, Ghost wants to fight. You couldn't use items and you had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was... Fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect Ghost, but did chip off a bit of your own HP. When it was Ghost's turn to attack, it would simply... say nothing. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, Ghost would finally use Curse. The screen cut to black a final time. Regardless of the buttons you pressed, you were permanently stuck on this black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was turn the Game Boy off. When you played again, a new game was the only option. 
the game had erased the file. I played through the hack game many, many times, and every time the game ended with this sequence. Several times I didn't use Ghost at all, though he was impossible to remove from the party. In these cases, it didn't show any Pokemon or trainers, and simply cut to the climatic back to Ghost. I'm not sure what the motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it was presumably not for monetary gain. It was very well done for a bootleg. It seems he was trying to convey a message. No, it seems I am the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure what it was. The inevitability of death? The pointlessness of it? Perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into a children's game. Regardless, this children's game has made me think, and it has made me cry.